Welcome back to the program, and it is the holiday season, so we're going to talk about a holiday movie, uh, a favorite for a lot of people, and that movie is... Home Alone. Hey, guys. Yesterday, he was just a kid, but tonight, he's a home security system. You guys give up, or you're thirsty for more? Great movie. Uh, I think this is something that, you know, people listen to this podcast might find a movie every once in a while that they haven't seen. You've seen Home Alone, and you've yeah. probably seen Home Alone 2, and you've probably seen Home Alone 3, and maybe you're going to see the new one. I don't know. I have not seen Home Alone 3. You haven't? Uh, I saw Home Alone 3 in Now, is Home Alone 3 the one that has the new kid? Yeah, they swap kids. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have not seen Home Alone 3. What? And I refuse to see the new Home Alone, uh, having watched the trailer. Now at this point, you know, spoiler alert, we've been, we were filming this ahead of it coming out. Yeah. Um, by the time this podcast comes out, the movie will have been released. We should watch it. We, we'll, we'll, we'll watch, watch it. it. We'll watch I it. But do like, on that. I, I don't know. I, I, I almost don't want to watch it. Like, I saw it and I was like, oh, come on. I don't think so. I mean, yeah, we, 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 we bitch about this a lot with sequels and reboots. I would go so far as to say, and I think uh, I enjoyed Home Alone 2. I haven't seen it in a, a minute. Probably shouldn't even have made a Home Alone 2 because my no. running joke that I've I've made a lot in the several years is that Home Alone 2 should have been called Home Alone 2, we're shitty parents. Or like, Home Alone 2, we need to get child services involved. Funnily enough, we never lose our luggage. <laughs> <laughs> now, the only thing that I would consider seeing as a sequel is the internet has thrown out the idea of Kevin McAllister is older now at this point, um, and he's got a kid, and it's kind of like a rehash. And I think it's supposed to it's casts um, Macaulay Culkin's in it, um, and um, uh, from Schitt's Creek, uh, David David uh, Levy, David Levy yeah. um, is supposed to be in it as well as his adult son or something. I don't know what, but like there's a whole like thing that they're all in it together or whatever. Um, I might consider seeing that, but even still, like I hate the notion of let's take this movie, which like in the theory of Ferris Bueller, if you've got a perfect movie, leave it alone. Like just let it be. Yeah. Um, and that's what I think you've got here. Like you've got this perfect movie to the point where both all the directors and the producers and everybody thought through every element of how is Kevin getting left behind? Now, first off, I still don't view it as, as realistic at all. No, you it's know, not like, supposed to be realistic. But, like, but they still thought through like, all of the, the, thing, the things that would prevent you from being like, well, see, that, that would never happen. Like his, his ticket gets swept up with the milk and is thrown in the garbage. And there's a kid in the van before, so they count the head counts. And so like, they think of all of the different things. I still contend that even pre-9-11, where you're going through security still and like going through the process they wouldn't leave the kid behind no there's no way um which is just that makes it unrealistic but but still like there's an element because they th they thought so much about it that makes it be like okay i can i can go with this you know like i can go with it but yeah it is 100 percent unrealistic especially when you can start considering all of the injuries <laughs> that everybody had to get throughout the you know like daniel stern uh, uh, and uh, Joe Pesci getting these injuries, of which there are 85 total injuries that the two sustain throughout the course of this movie. Things such as internal bleeding, lacerations, broken bones, a broken back, herniated discs, concussions, broken skull, second degree burns, something called melted skull. Melted skull! That doesn't sound good or worth it. Cracked ribs. Those are just some of the injuries that, like, these dudes are dead. Yeah. Like, there is no way, dude, Daniel Stern falling down the stairs, he's not getting back up. He broke his hip. He's done. Like, there's no getting up from that. I, I mean, you put that aside, of course, for the sake of the movie, and you kind of have fun with it, but still, just, like, totally unrealistic. So, I don't know. But going to the, let me take a step back here, because the other reason why it's unrealistic how the hell is this guy affording not only his house, which is supposed to be in Chicago, it's a Chicago movie, 
Filmed um, in the suburbs? Was filmed in the suburbs. Was, filmed okay. filmed yeah, in yeah. Wilmette. Filmed yeah. in Wilmette. That's what I thought. Um, off of Lake Avenue uh, in Wilmette. Uh, that's where the church is. Yeah, because the they, they talk about the Home Alone house. Yeah, yeah. But this dude, it's in Chicago. How does the dude afford this house, all of those kids, and a Paris vacation? They, they say what his profession is? No, well, I don't think we know what his profession is. It could be a lawyer, a doctor, a uh, uh, that, finance that's, guy. That's crazy, though. I mean, that's a lot of money. That's a lot, a lot of money that this dude's shelling out and I don't think so I don't know I mean maybe they say his profession but I still don't think it is realistic and like this dude's not out there playing the credit card game like he's not doing churning and uh manufactured spending and stuff like one of our one of the hosts here does uh we won't tell you who but one of the two of us does that he's not doing that like this dude I and then he affords they go, I don't even know where they go in the second one, but they don't go to New York. He goes to New York. Right. Um, they go wherever the hell they go, Tokyo or whatever. And in, in this new one, they go to Tokyo. Like, I don't know how you're, how you're spending that much money. That's why it's unrealistic. Also, if but. you were in that situation, you're a parent, you've got kids. Uh, if you were, or you realize you left one of them behind, what, is, what, what do you do in that situation? You freak the fuck out, of course. Well, right? Like, First off, that's why I contend, like having kids, I'm not, leaving my kid behind. Now I only have two. I don't have 17 and a half children yeah. plus but still, cousins I mean, or whatever. Like, like I'm Jesus. not leaving a kid behind no matter how much I hate the kid, which clearly she does in this movie. Yeah. Um, but I just like, I, I don't know. You, you just, I just can't get beyond that. Like you're just not leaving them behind. And even if you were leaving them behind, like even if it is Christmas, I don't see how you, you're not getting back. Yeah, no, you're not getting back. Like, like, especially for an emergency, too. Like, if the airlines, if you call the airlines today and we're like, I have to fly to San Francisco, I got to fly to Paris because my aunt, my mother died, right? Like, they have bereavement and they'll get you on a plane. Like, they'll get you home or they'll get you wherever you need to go. If you say, like, I, my kid is home alone, there is nobody there, I fucked up, like, there's no kid. Or like there's there no kid with me like he's all alone there's no parent with him and there's nobody to look after him they're gonna be like okay let's get you on a plane we'll figure something out we'll we'll get you back also my thought wouldn't be he's home alone my thought would be did we lose him at the airport like where what where along the lines did we lose did he get kid? kidnapped did he get kidnapped yeah, yeah. my th my brain would go bananas there and then i would also think like i have a neighbor or a friend or a family member that I, my first instinct is to be like can you get over to my house immediately to see if my kid is there yeah and take that's care what they're of saying them. like everybody is out of town everybody yeah. is they've out of created the like, situation that is so irrational and that's the only way we can make that work now does it hurt that because we both said like this is a great movie and people love it and it's rewatchable and stuff like does it hurt the premise at all because i feel like they could have created something like risky business where it's like everyone's gone for a weekend and there's a kid at home alone but i guess yeah. what we can't do that with a kid this this little yeah. does it hurt? Does it hurt the movie at all? That is unrealistic. Because for me, as a kid, I never thought about it. No. Now, as an adult, I think about how unrealistic this movie is. Yeah, for sure. As a kid, it's like, oh, that's so funny. Look, I got micro machines. I'm going to use my yeah. micro machines to protect my house and marbles and whatever. Like, yeah, that's what you think. And then, as an adult, you're like, no, no. That I'm thinking of all of the other things that, like, how did I leave them behind? How am I going to get back to them? How can we like figure something out? Like that just that's where no you cell phones too so yeah. i mean not that the kid would have a cell phone with how young i mean i don't know what how old the kids have cell phones. i feel like they have kids have cell phones now the kids have cell phones like young well, really the umbilical young. cord is yeah. cut um but you would think you can like text somebody in the neighborhood like to like do something to get instant communication yeah. back then you, know, you can't there's yeah. no instant like no, call no instant somebody. anything yeah. yeah uh let me ask you a question uh and i've got an answer for this of what i believe but uh do you believe this movie is in the same universe as Rookie of the Year? Rookie of the Year. Gotcha. Why? Because it's also the Chicago suburbs. So it's so so it's in Chicago slash yeah. Chicago suburbs. Uh, but Daniel Stern uh, actually gets out of prison, rehabs his life, and becomes a pitcher and a pitching coach for the Chicago Cubs. Um, he fixes his life up after the events of what happens in Home Alone. But didn't when did Home Alone come out? Uh, 1990. And Rookie of the Year came out in 90, 91? 
Oh, I don't know. I'm just saying, like, is it in the same? I mean, like, I'm oh, I'm just creating because I, by the sequence of events, Home Alone had to come first, and I think Rookie of the Year came out in '91. Call in if you know. I think it came out in '91. Um, or maybe it's the other way around. Maybe he had his career <laughs> as a as a pitcher and turns to a life of crime because they locked him in the uh, the the. Uh, the the not closet yeah, but the like the, during the during the NLCS. that movie sucks ass. W which movie? Rookie of the Year. You think it sucks ass? Yeah, we'll get to it later. But uh, I'm gonna go with that theory because that's fun, and I think we should we should figure out a way to connect every movie that's been filmed in the Chicago suburbs. Together. I like that. Yeah, I, I mean they're all connected as Chicago movies, but for sure that's... there's no like they're not none of them are like science fiction or anything, so they feel like we could in a way connect yeah, all of for them. sure. But they're all just neighbors. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so the only other thing that I've got here is. Um, there's a theory about this movie, um, and I'd like to get your input on this. Uh, the theory is that um, Gus Polinski, the polka king of the Midwest, is actually the devil. So the theory goes, uh, um, uh, uh, I'm, just, I'm thinking of her name, I can't think of her name. Uh, so Kate, yeah. Kate McAllister, uh, is in the Scranton airport, okay? And she's trying to get home from the Scranton airport. And she says, I will sell my soul to get home to my kid. If it costs me everything I own, if I have to sell my soul to the devil himself, I am going to get home to my son. Scranton, the Scranton airport happens to be a crossroads uh, because the two runways are actually crosses. I've been there. Um, and, um, the the stories about devils go the devil will if you offer to sell your soul it will be at a crossroads and the devil will make an agreement to give you whatever it is that you're asking for in in, in exchange for your soul um, in this case um, Kate McAllister has sold her soul to get home to her son um, and uh, one of the things that is especially of interest here is that um, there are several uh, citations from the Bible that say the devil's instrument of choice is not a violin despite what Charlie Daniels says. The devil's instrument of choice is a woodwind instrument. Um, in particular they lean towards flute uh, but all they mention is woodwind type instruments um, and wouldn't you know Gus plays the, uh, the clarinet which happens to be a woodwind instrument. So did Kate McAllister sell her soul to the devil to get home to her son? Now that's a little out there, but I'm going to go, here's my, my answer on that. That makes more sense than leaving your kid behind and not knowing that your kid wasn't with you. So I think that's a better, a better theory to go with. I mean, it all leads up to it, right? Like the devil played a hand and maybe Kevin getting left behind so that he could get Kate so flustered and uh, desperate to sell her soul. I dig it. I mean, I'm, I'm down for that, you know? I'm more into the movie now. After, as an adult, I think I need to, I can't suspend disbelief that you forget one of your 32 children, so, so there you that's go. a horror film. I'm going high on the score, uh, even though I think like my personal view of it has, is all over the place and I can't really decide how I feel about it. I'm going high, I think it's like a seven, eight. I'm going very high on this one too. Um, I don't think it breaks eight, um, but I'm going to go seven, seven on this one. That was so close. 7.6. Oh, oh. <laughs> wow. Very close there. Right. I mean, I'm still going to watch this movie every Christmas. Oh, I haven't seen it in like 10 years. I, I've been, I have gotten to the point where we are re-watching movies. Like, like during Christmas, we watch like almost all of the, like the big Christmas movies. Really? And we just make a habit of it. Like, we just make sure that I rewatch Bad Santa. That's about it. That's it? Yeah. No, Which I like, think is one of the best Christmas movies ever. Not like Elf. No. Uh, Christmas, Elf in, Christmas Story. In, Christmas Story, I've seen too much. That's for sure. Everybody has seen that movie. It was on too much. T TBS over and over again, but. All right. Okay. Home Alone. <laughs>